Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we will be looking at Dutch defense, which starts with d4, f5. Now white has two ways of playing. If they play pawn to c4 here, you simply develop your knight to f6. White most often responds with g3, planning to fianchetto the bishop. Then you play pawn to e6, and they play bishop to g2. You develop your bishop to e7, they develop their knight to f3. Then you both castle, and you play pawn to d6. White plays knight to c3. This position is considered the classical variation of the Dutch defense. Your main plan here is to start pushing your pawns to e4 and f5 to destabilize their king's position and occupy the center. Let's go back. Here you also can play pawn to d5, and after knight to c3, you respond with pawn to c6, which marks the stonewall variation. Then white can play pawn to e3, and you develop your knight to d7. Here black has a solid position with control over the e4 square. Going back to the earlier position, another option for white here is to play pawn to b3. You still play pawn to c6, and after bishop to a3, you develop your knight to d7. In this line, white tries to exchange black's dark squared bishop to reduce the chances of an attack on their king. However, black still has very good chances to dominate the game. Let's go back. Another option for black here is to play pawn to g6 which marks the start of the Leningrad Dutch. Then white plays bishop to g2 and you play bishop to g7. They develop their knight to f3. Then you both castle and you play pawn to d6. They will probably develop their knight to c3. In this position, you can see a very close position to the king's Indian, with the only difference being that the pawn on the f-file is on f5 rather than f7. Compared to king's Indian where you need to play pawn to f5, with the Leningrad Dutch your pawn is already there so you can play an extra move. You already control the e4 square, so your plan is to push your pawn to e5, after queen to e8 and knight to d7 for example. Returning to the earlier position, the second option for white here is to play pawn to e4, which marks the aggressive Staunton gambit. Now you can either accept or decline the gambit. If you play pawn takes e4, accepting the gambit, white develops their knight to c3. You develop your knight to f6, and they play bishop to g5. You respond with a pawn to g6. In this position if white takes on f6, you simply capture and then you play bishop to g7 and castle. Returning to the previous position, if you play pawn to d5, defending the e4 pawn, it is a blunder, because as white would take on f6 and after black recaptures, white play queen to h5 check, pawn to g6, queen takes the d5 pawn, you recapture with a queen and they take with a knight. Here white gets an extra pawn and a better position as result. Going back, here white can also play pawn to f3. I recommend not capturing the f3 pawn but instead pushing your pawn to e3. This move spoils white's pawn structure and blocks their knight from developing on natural squares. Afterward, they capture and you play pawn to d5. Bishop to d3, pawn to g6, knight to e2, and bishop to g7. White has compensation for the gambit style opening, but the game is even, with equal chances for both sides. Another option is to decline the gambit. To do so, you should play pawn to d6, as it is the only proper way to decline. Therefore the following sequence of moves can occur. Pawn takes f5, bishop takes f5, bishop to d3, queen to d7, knight to f3, knight to c6, they castle, pawn to e5. As you can see, black has serious weaknesses of white squares near their king which will become the target of white's attack. Although playing d6 is a proper move to decline the Staunton gambit, it still leads to a worse position compared to whites. That wraps up today's video on the Dutch defense and its variations in chess. Hope you enjoyed it. This video covers everything you need to get started with this opening. With a little practice, you can explore its nuances in more depth. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more chess-related content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.